on poetry today, let's look at the Byronesque poems of Hansen. You have so many relationships in this life, only one or two will last. You go through all the pain and strife, then you turn your back and they're gone so fast. Oh yeah. So hold on the ones who really care. In the end, they're the only ones there. And when you get old and start losing your hair, can you tell me who will care? Mmm, bop, bada da dop. Plant a seed, plant a flower, plant a rose. You can plant any of those. Keep planting to find out which one grows. It's a secret no one knows. Let's solve the after party. Season 2, episode 9, Isabel. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Edgar the Groom and Roxana the Lizard. Seriously, this is it. This is episode 9. We've got to know now. Spoilers for season one and pretty much all of season two of The After Party. If you haven't seen the nine episodes of season two, pause this video. Enjoy the latest fads like toaster ovens, slinkies, and Michael Buble. Then come back and watch this video. You may be madder than a mad hatter at a hat haberdashery, but this episode doesn't give us new information about too many characters. So in the rundown, if you don't see new information about Fang or Vivian, Understand it's just there really weren't any clues that I saw in this episode that pointed to them to being Edgar and Roxana's killer. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect that you want to hear about and skip past stuff you don't want to hear. Now we are going to have a video next week and we're going to review all the answers to all our questions. We're going to hold up the After Party Season 2 mystery to Ronald Knox's famed Ten Commandments of Detective Fiction and see if it passes those Ten Commandments or breaks them. We'll celebrate what we got right, what we got wrong, what we missed, what we found, and what we'd like to see in the After Party Season 3. Plus, we'll talk about the next mystery we might cover, as well as hopefully some amusing stories of how seven years ago when I lived in Los Angeles and I hadn't put on COVID-19 pounds, everybody would mistake me for actor Zach Woods. Now in this video on episode 9, at the end of it, past your feedback, we're going to present competing evidence to last week's big theory. There's a group of people who say, hey, if you look at the evidence this way, it kind of contradicts it. So we're going to look at it, we'll let you decide, but that'll be after everything at the end of the feedback. But first, before we get into the usual flow of these videos, I thought I'd touch on clues that I thought would be something, but appear to have been nothing. And these are clues I haven't pointed out before. I flip these videos around in a day, I miss stuff all the time, and I actually sometimes forget to go back and include clues or observations that I thought may pay off later. For example, in the very first episode of season two, I did make a note that both Sebastian and Hannah got very close to Edgar's body. Now, if you're a mystery writer or creating a murder mystery, this would be a wonderful opportunity for one of these two to be the killer and either take incriminating evidence away or plant evidence on the body to frame somebody else. Nothing seems to have come of it, so I never went back and put that clue in any of the videos. In episode three, I thought the teapot in Edgar and Grace's bedroom being covered by a tea cozy, I thought that would be a plant by the actual killer to frame Grace for the murder. But it never came up. In episode four in Hannah's Mind movie, she tells Detective Danner and Anique that Sebastian said to her, tomorrow's a big day for both of us. You're losing a brother and I'm losing a business partner. Now Anique focuses on Sebastian and Anique says the line, you don't lose a business partner because of a marriage. And so he and Danner deduce that Sebastian was going to be leaving Edgar's cryptocurrency company. But they never focus on why anyone would say you're losing a brother to Hannah. Even after Edgar was married, he'd still be her brother. She wasn't losing a brother. But again, it seems like nothing ever came from it. And don't get me started on the opened and closed closet door in the bedroom. This feels like a throwback to season one. And possibly the show purposely had bad continuity to throw off viewers. If it was closed when Grace woke up and discovered Edgar's body, but open when all the suspects were in the bedroom, and then still open when Isabel goes in the bedroom, how did it get open? Or is this trying to tease viewers who remember the closet being such a big part of season one's mystery? What do you think? You guys have been wonderful on YouTube, giving us likes and comments and subscribing. If you haven't done it, I need you to like and comment on every video. If you're on audio podcast, I do need you to subscribe and leave a written review if you can.
It means the world to us, and it costs you nothing. Let's look at this week's bonus clue. Look at this Scrabble board. Then look at the letters that connect two words. Here you see N, O, you know the next one, T. This spills out not without planning. This murder wasn't an accident, wasn't a spur of the moment thing. Someone planned this killing. Before we run down the suspects, let's see what episode nine taught us about the victim, Roxana, and her jerk of an owner, Edgar. Edgar tells his mother, Isabel, that he's got her sleeping pills, but it's actually Adderall. Did Edgar give his father sleeping pills rather than Adderall when his father was flying the plane that crashed? Edgar believes crypto is superior to boring dollars that have a president's face on them. Part of the gaslighting is when Edgar played Scrabble with his mother. He lied to his mother, Isabel, and said Grace's name was Gail. Part of Edgar's scheme is to pretend that his mother is frittering away all the Alexander Minow's money. Edgar might have a stooge in Dr. Shushkind, this Hitchcock-like figure, in his scheme. He's gaslighting his mother so bad, claiming that the two pills are a different shade of blue. Yay. Edgar brings his mother a slice of cake. But then when he's not looking, she switches the slices of cake on him. Now he ate the piece meant for his mother. What do you think? Was Edgar planning on poisoning his mother? Did he take poison himself? Or is this completely innocent? Now let's look at the suspects. And again, there aren't really many that have new information. Hannah Cornelia Minows, the groom's sister. Sweet odd bird Hannah is making a casket for Roxana. Does Hannah not intend to use her taxidermy skills for Roxana? Isabel, the mother of the groom. Cold, haughty, intimidatingly beautiful Isabel is a real heavy drinker, and she's been having a difficult year. Her husband, Alexander, died very suddenly. He died as he lived, successfully. Isabel is not successfully sleeping because Edgar gave her fake sleeping pills, keeping her awake and paranoid. Isabel plays Scrabble with Edgar, and her letters spell crazy AF. I don't ever talk about it too much, but this show can be pretty funny. That was the moment that made me laugh the hardest in this episode. What did you guys laugh at the most in this episode? Edgar's trick was to say Grace's name is Gail. Edgar's been so terrible, Isabel believes that her son sent Sebi 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 to seduce her. Isabel claims she was trying to help Grace by having her sign the prenup and collect one million dollars. Not about Isabel, but these red flashes that happened with the wedding photographer's pictures is a direct callback to Rear Window, one of my favorite Hitchcock movies. The speech was a cover of Hansen's Mbop. In the day after the wedding, Isabel found the correct wedding napkins for Edgar and Grace, which she had ordered. What do you guys think? Is Anik right? He's gotta be. Switching the cake didn't kill Edgar. Sebastian Drapewood, the best man. Sebastian is trying to save his nest egg and get rid of all the crypto he can. Once Sebastian makes his deal, he calls the cops. He doesn't care who did it. Does anyone still believe Sebastian is Edgar and Roxana's killer? Travis Gladrise. With the stealth of an ice cream van, Travis follows Sebastian out of the house. He sees Sebastian selling off the crypto. Travis has figured it out. What do you think will become of Travis next week if he isn't the killer? Will he join Sebastian in becoming the house that always wins? Or will he shut down those fat cats ruining the American dream? Now let's get to your feedback. Cesium said, loving season two way more than season one. I wasn't as invested with season one, and I binged the whole season without even trying to figure out who killed Xavier. Jose also wrote, I actually believe season two is better than season one. The genres and mind movies are more prominent and diverse than last season. And episodes like Hannah and Ulysses, they feel as if they were produced as big as the movies they're satirizing. What do you guys think? Do you like season one better, season two better? Sue Perb wrote, Assuming Sebastian didn't clean out the safe, maybe he'll invest with Fang. He likes Bao Bing and doesn't trust crypto. Fang helped him out. It would make a lot of sense. Satori made the note, In Travis's episode, he said he was talking to the DJ when Edgar left in the middle of the first dance with Grace. But Kyler's footage shows that Travis was not standing by the DJ. You don't see him anywhere. 
Travis lied about this? What else has he lied about? I don't trust most of his story anymore. We got a lot of feedback about the Ulysses Fang drink debacle from last week's podcast. Nolan wrote, One thing I was confused about was if Ulysses was trying to kill Fang, how come Fang didn't die? By Ulysses' own account, Fang took a huge sip of the drink before he left the bar. But if you watch the footage in episode 8, when Isabel was trying to kick Kyler out, Fang never actually did drink that drink. Everything's fallen into place for me. The killer is Ulysses. Dim Sim wrote, The creators definitely want us to watch that drink swap and were clever in creating doubt about what actually happened by cutting it the way they did. If the killer isn't Ulysses, my money is on Travis. Quincy wrote, There is no way the producers would make it that obvious. There's going to be a curveball somewhere. C. Theodora wrote, I still think it was Hannah, and the glass switch was a red herring that only serves to show why Fang was up all night due to the Adderall. Hannah's story is the least consistent with the other tellings, and Fang saying it was all about Vivian makes me feel like they're pointing to it being all about Grace. Okay, so now let's get to the big anti-Ulysses theory that's out there. Zero provided this feedback. If you watch Kyler's video, Vang somehow switches hands between the Bao Bing and his drink from the bar to when he got to Edgar. And I'll stop it right there and look at it. When Fang leaves the bar, the Bao Bing bowl is in his right hand and the drink is in his left hand. Kyler tilts the camera down as he's trying to move to a different location. And next we see the Bao Bing in Fang's left hand and the drink in Fang's right hand. The counter argument goes like this. Fang had the drink in his left hand and the Bao Bing in his right. He walks up to Edgar, he puts down his drink first, then he moves the Bao Bing from his right hand to his left so he can grab Edgar's drink and put it down as well. And so Fang would be picking up his drink in this scenario. Now the people who pointed this out are very eagle-eyed, and I do think they caught something that doesn't make too much sense of why the Bao Bing and the drink switched hands. But on the flip side, where's our other killer? We've got one week, everybody. Drop those comments. Let me know who you think did it. All the comments right there. And we'll regroup next week and celebrate the After Party Season 2. Detectives and other members of the Clue Crew will talk next week.